sleep was important, being in the real world or the digital one. In reality, sleep was used to reset a person's brain while gaining a huge boost in energy. While in the digital circus, it was used to pass the time or to have a routine so you wouldn't abstract. Though occasionally, through what some of the formerly human characters called bad RNG, a character would require sleep for specific reasons. In your case, sleep was a detriment. As when you had first manifested, you found that you were unable to move at all. Sure, you could feel your body, but it was as if your muscles had been replaced by concrete. The pose you had spawned with was uncomfortable too. You were on the tips of your toes, arms stretched up into the air. And so you had remained for a few hours until that day's show began, when you were revealed as a new character. Though still, you just stood there frozen, until the ringmaster Kane had an idea. He flew behind you and you could feel something enter your back. Your eyes widened as you heard a clicking noise in your ears, as the metallic object began to twist and turn. Each click flooding your body with a wonderful feeling, a wave of energy. After the 10th click, you could move your hands. After the 20th, you could move and turn your head. It was a long process that was making you very impatient. Thankfully, Ragatha, a doll-like digital circus character, had taken it upon herself to introduce you to your new reality. As Kane vigorously turned the thing in your back to feed you. By the time Ragatha finished her explanations, your fear and surprise had been replaced with melancholic depression. You adjusted surprisingly well to the new reality, but your body still was fighting you at every turn. In this digital world you had stayed mostly human. Honestly, even though you didn't remember your human self, in a good way too. You'd call your new body pretty, and that was a feeling that felt new. As if, in the real world, you hated your appearance. You were a beautiful ballerina toy. While your skin appeared to be white porcelain, it was actually soft and a little squishy too, while being quite firm when tensing your muscles. In your room were a vast selection of beautiful white ballerina gowns and even some yoga outfits. Something that made Ragatha seethe of jealousy as all she had were the same light blue dress. Your hair was brown and reached down to your shoulders. You kept it tightly secured in a ponytail though. Your eyes were blue and surprisingly detailed, for the digital circus at least. Your hands and feet dainty and fragile looking. But above all, on your back you had a large gaping black hole, in which fit a key that needed to be turned every once in a while for you to retain your mobility. Effectively you had turned into a music box ballerina toy. It seemed to be the cruelest of jokes. You felt pretty, beautiful even, and yet still your body managed to be your number one enemy. Your name in this world was Dottie, and I'm given to you by Kane's slot machine on its fourth attempt. It was the first one that didn't sound like random letters strung together, and it sounded decently pleasant. Your problem is had arisen on your first night. While, yes, the concept of time didn't really exist in the digital circus, night was considered the first eight hours after an adventure had been finished. During this time, everyone retreated to their rooms for comfort. But for you, 
this time was scary. As during those eight hours, there was no one to wind you up. Luckily, usually by the time everyone awoke, you still had enough movement inside of you, so you could just barely leave it to be wound up by someone. Usually Ragatha or Pomni. The two girls seemed to be the most helpful. However, today was different. Today, you had fallen asleep. Normally, you would spend the time awake, listening to the terrible circus music, playing with blocks scattered around your room like a child, anything just to keep yourself busy. But during the last adventure, you had been done with everything. It had been a team-based adventure. On your team was Ragatha, Kanger, and Gangle. On the other were Pomni, Jack, Zubel, and to make it fair, Kane gave them Bubble as well. The adventure was a scavenger hunt mixed in with a bit of a creative exercise, where the pieces of the hunt needed to be put together to create the biggest possible tower. You ended up losing thanks to Jack's constantly intervening in your side of the hunt. Sure, there was no real point in winning, but when you spend enough time in the digital circus, any time waster is something to hold on to. And you started taking adventures serious. Really falling into a sort of roleplay here. Maybe it was your coping mechanism to not abstract. And so you had slept for the very first time in the digital circus. And when you awoke, you couldn't even open your eyes. All your energy was drained. It was like your first day again. Just more scary. You were in your locked room. There was no one who had a key, to your knowledge. You were losing your mind quickly. The fear of never being able to move, and the fact that your mouth was closed so you couldn't even scream, the ever-present darkness, you couldn't see it, but... as you were screaming inside your head, your fingers began to twitch. Meanwhile outside, the others were in the stage area. Kane was making a headcount to start the adventure he had come up with, a fun idea called Comedy Night. Over the circus speakers, an NPC he had hidden somewhere would call randomly generated jokes, his personal favorite being, Why did the chicken cross the road? Weed eater! It just was the perfect joke to the entity. The goal would be to find the NPC and make it stop telling jokes so the characters would stop belly laughing. <sighs> Kane couldn't wait for them to hear the jokes. But with disappointment, he noticed that you didn't show up. Where's Dottie? She needs to partake in this glorious adventure! It was then Bomni and Ragatha realized they didn't turn your key today. The two girls felt absolutely terrible. It was the first time they had forgotten it, too. But at the same time, they did want to admit to anyone that they had forgotten you. And Pomni raised a finger. Kane? The ringmaster turned around to look at the jester. What's up, Pomni? Why don't you just start the adventure? Uh, m me and Regatha can get Dottie and she can join us that way? Kane closed his mouth for a moment and thought. And then he jolted up. I accept! <laughs> this adventure is called... Comedy Night! As Kane explained the rules, Pomni and Ragatha snug off towards the sleeping quarters. Do you think she'll be mad? Asked Pomni cautiously. Uh, well, uh, how mad could she be? I mean, I... It never happened before. You know, it's, it, it can't happen. It's normal. Ragatha was deflecting to calm her own nerves. The two girls stopped at your door, ringing your doorbell. What if she's frozen and can't open it? asked Pomni, concerned. Please don't say that, snapped Ragatha. She's fine, 
Everything's fine. Everyone's okay. Nobody's abstracting. She rung the doorbell again, and again, and then twice. Finally, she took a step back. Sighing, she exhaled, and then groaned. <sighs> we need Jax. You cursed your body. You cursed your existence. You cursed the circus. Most, if not all, feelings had left you at this point. Needing only anger. You once heard Kinger talk about the five stages of grief. You had left denial quite quickly. Because your anger knew no bounds. You were mad at Jax for making you so done with everything that you had fallen asleep. You were mad at yourself for not at least sleeping outside so someone could turn your key when they saw you lying there. And you were furious about the digital circus putting you into the situation at all. Time was moving insurmountably slow in your head. Seconds were minutes, minutes were hours, hours were days. Spending all this time in this black void, no sounds, no moving, no feeling. You were losing yourself every nanosecond, more and more. It was pure torture. If at least your eyes were open, you could have some input. Sure, it was the sensory overload of a super colorful digital world, but it was something. Now, this was far worse. Faintly, you heard the ding-dongs of your door, but you couldn't answer them. And this made it worse. Help was right there, but it couldn't get to you. And only made you more angry. Okay, ladies, watch the master at work. Ragatha rolled her eyes as Jax commented. All he did was steal keys and make copies of them. Remember the last time we did this, Pomni? The jester whimpered as she remembered her horrible first day. And Kofmo. With a smirk, Jax entered your room. The two girls close behind. Uh, God damn it, he complained. You are still lying on your bed, yes, but your right arm was leaking black fluid from beneath your fingernails. Jax's eyes moved from your body to the girls behind him. An idea came to him. Alright, I'll be with you two in a second. He slammed the door behind him shut. Concerned, Ragutha and Pomley looked at each other. Meanwhile, Jax approached you, slowly, Carefully. Dotty, 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 it's, um, been a couple of hours. You're already abstracting, just so you know. You could feel your nerves tense up. Wait, you were abstracting? This is how it felt? Wait, you were abstracting? No, that couldn't be. It were just a few, uh, hours? Maybe days? That you had been here? Lying? No, your mind wasn't this weak. You could hear Jax come closer, and that's when your arm cracked up painfully. As pain fluttered through every synapse of your being. Like a feral snake, your arm twisted and broke as it tried to lunge at Jax. One mind-melting pain made the blackness appear white. He shouted, Hey, hey, it's still an early stage. You, you, don't, you don't have to be mad at me. He taunted as he dodged your snapping fingers. Just let Uncle Jack handle it, okay? Your arm kept twisting and glitching as it tried to reach Jax's throat. Early stage abstraction was when the body was still only turning. You couldn't fathom the amount of emotions you must have felt when you woke up helpless like this. It was enough for even him to feel something. He managed to jump on your back. Your nose exhaled a gust of air. You could feel his weight on you. It was so comforting that it made you tear up. He gurgled as your hand finally connected with his throat. Ignoring the pain, he turned the key. Once, 
twice. Energy was returning to you, and so was hope. Each twist of the key made the grip around the rabbit's throat lessen as you regained more control over your arm. And when it finally went limp, you raised your head, letting out your first scream of pain. It was unbearable. It hurt so much. Every bone must have been broken multiple times. Useless your arm was hanging from the bed. Black liquid still seeping from it. Okay, okay, hold still, I'm still not done here. Order Jax angrily. With the resistance of your body gone, he continued to wind up your body. Until the resistance of the key became too much and he stopped. By now your body had regenerated the many cracked bones in your arm, so you could move it again. Now, uh, do you feel... do you... Okay, now, uh, do you still feel like you're going to abstract because uh, then I need to get gain? Oh, you muffled into your pillow. I don't think so. Uh, I didn't even know I was abstracting. Slowly, Jax let you sit up. And he winced as he saw your face. What? I think it's better if you don't leave your room today. You gulped. Why? He looked down at yourself. Your skin was covered in black, pulsating veins. Confused, you touched your face. Black tar covering your fingers. As you looked down at your bed, your pillow was soaked in it. With shaking hands, you grabbed it and threw it away into the corner of your room. Normally we're too late, said Jax with a relaxed tone. Glad it didn't happen again. Pony and Ragatha would hate themselves for the rest of their lives. And they'd probably abstract then too, shortly after. You looked over at Jax. He was holding a towel. He was holding a towel that he had picked up from your floor. Thank you. You said as you cleaned your face with a deadpan expression. I'm curious, how did it feel? You put down the towel. It was covered in blackness. <sighs> I didn't even wait for you to look decent to ask that stupid question. I felt anger. A lot of it. You put a hand on your chin as you thought. Actually, it was probably the most anger I ever felt. Jax nodded. That checked out with the angry scribbles all over Coffee's room. The Kaufmo looked more desperate rather than mad. Well, I don't like saying it, but I'm glad you're okay. Skeptically, you raised an eyebrow. I mean it. You're fun to mess with. And I'd lose a great opportunity for fun if you abstract it. Ugh, of course. Jack's always thought of himself first. Though at least you provided him enough entertainment for him to give a rat's ass about you. That probably meant more than he could ever be willing to admit. Also, Jack reached under your bed, pulling out a bowl of candy you had collected over the months. You're the only one who has got a good candy supply. He took out a shiny red lollipop and began sucking on it. Dick, you muttered. Only for both of your eyes to widen in surprise. Dick, he said, confused. Wait, Dick isn't censored? Of all the words? You asked. That's awesome! The two of you started saying Dick like it was a mind-bending mantra. Until... Man, I love it when you say that. You blinked. Huh? Jack said without realizing it. He scratched the back of his head, embarrassed, and spit out the stick from the lollipop. Smart Leo grinned at him. And why is that? He leaned forward, his ears perking up. Well, chicks who curse really turned me on. You blushed. 
though due to your still recovering body, your cheeks turned black rather than red. And Jax blinked, confused. What? Did I say something wrong? No, nothing. Why did he think that looked hot? Oh god, was he into emo goth chicks as a human? The cringe, he sighed. But he gave up. Leaning forward and cupping your chin with his right hand, he whispered, I just like it when you're blushing. Him saying that only made it worse. Jax, where's this coming from? You giggled, embarrassed. Do you like it? He paused. I, I guess. He pushed forward, pressing you down on your bed. Well, how about this? With a smirk, he kissed you right on your lips. Your eyes widened. He tasted like cherry from the lollipop. You moaned as he overpowered you, his hands feeling like they were everywhere. He wasn't giving you a moment to breathe. Man, your body is super soft, he said with a surprised tone as he squeezed your flesh. You really are the most human out of all of us, aren't you? His head moved to your ear. So, little ballerina, is it also atomically correct? Uh, why don't you find out, you silly rabbit? You said before taking hold of his head and pressing his lips back on your mouth, his tongue pushing past your lips as his hands began to slide down your hips. His thick, cherry-flavored tongue met yours, and you moaned in delight. His sweet, sweet salvia made your toes curl and your heart race. You narrowed your eyes, smirking. Jax didn't know what he was getting himself into. After all, he made sure that you were really full of energy. Meanwhile, Pomni and Ragatha stood outside your door. Ugh, these jokes are really getting on my nerves, muttered Ragatha under her breath. There was a speaker at the end of the hallway that was blaring out the NPC's terrible jokes. M maybe we should get Jax and Dottie, suggested Pomni. I mean, why is he taking so long? Do you think she abstracted and killed him? Ragatha gulped, immediately opening the door, where she saw your bed with you and Jax on top of it, huffing, sweating, making deliciously lewd sounds. Her eye twitched. The two of you haven't noticed her intrusion yet. Quickly, she closed the door behind herself. Ragatha? I saw Jax naked. What? Pomni, let's just go. What do you mean, naked? Ragatha grabbed Pomni by the shoulder, pushing her away from the door. Please just stop talking. Just go. We have, um... An NPC to stop making jokes. Please. Thank you to the people who are supporting me on Kofi. You guys are keeping me alive.